Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I'm excited because we're gonna be talking about my April TBR. I'd like to be able to share monthly TBRs with you. We'll see if I'm able to stick with that, but so far I did one in my last reading vlog and this one's gonna be its own April TBR video. So I'm excited to talk about what I'm gonna be reading in April. For this first segment, and I feel like this is going to be a segment that pops up in all of my TBRs, it's going to be what books I didn't read in March that I'd like to be able to roll over into April if I'm still feeling like I want to read those. I am very much so a mood reader, so there might be some books that I'm not really feeling or don't really wanna read right now, so I might take them off that list if they were in the previous month. I like to have a variety of books because I am a mood reader, but I also recognize that I do need some sort of a list to kind of motivate me to read. I wanted to share with you the books that I haven't been able to get to in March and that I'm hoping to get to in April. I'm probably just going to rapid fire them if I've already discussed them. So I did talk about some of these in my reading blog that I posted previously. It's I go through my March TBR, so I'm not going to go too in depth on them just because I don't want to bore you. With with the same books I've already talked about. The first one on that list is Getting Lost by Annie Erno. This is her memoir and I would really like to get to it in April because it is a library book so I need to return it soon. This one seems like it might be a quick one just because her memoir is told through diary entries so I think I should be able to get to it in April but we'll see if that's on the list for this month. The next one that is also a library book and it's my book club's book. It's All Down Darkness by Sean Hewitt. So I started this one, but I'm only like 10 pages in. It is a shorter memoir, but I can already tell that this one is probably gonna take me a little bit longer because it's just so like beautifully written and there's a lot of description. So I feel like it might take me a little bit to get through. This is a library book. It's also a memoir. We'll see. Memoir March is going to turn it into memoir April, apparently. The next one that I didn't get to in March is Milk, Blood, Heat. This is a collection of short stories and it's been on my list for such a long time. I really want to get to this one in April and it's on the shorter side so I'm hoping I'll be able to. The next one is Us Against You by Frederick Bachman. I'm doing a buddy read of this with Sally and we both haven't started it so moving it into April. And the last book is You Be Mother. I was actually making a bit of a dent into it. I'm about halfway through but I took a pause on this because I wanted to participate in the Trans Rights Readathon that took place on March 20th to March 27th so that's why I kind of put this one on hold. I set this in my blog but I'm buddy reading this one with Seiki. We're continuing it on into April. So these are the books that are rolling over. We'll see how many I'm a actually able to get to. Hopefully I'll be able to make a little bit of a dent into those. I also wanted to add in some new reads just because I know if I just stick to those it's gonna make me want to look at other books because those were the books I had set for March just for my mood reader self. I know I'm gonna want to like change it up and also I know I'm like setting this TBR but I'm like so easily like swayed into different directions so we'll see how many of these I'll actually get to. The first one that I added to this list is The Friend by Sacred Nunez. This one's just been on my shelves for a really long time so I'm hoping this will be the time that I actually get to it. I don't know too much about this except that it's about a friend who passes away and they have this dog and that dog then goes to stay with another friend and I feel like this is probably going to be a really interesting way to see how grief is kind of discussed and covered. I also am obsessed with this cover. Like I love all the colors, the dog in the front. It's just a very aesthetically pleasing book cover for me. But I'll read the cover of this just so you kind of have a synopsis on what it's about. When a woman unexpectedly loses her lifelong best friend and mentor, she finds herself burdened with the unwanted dog he has left behind. Her own battle against grief is intensified by the mute suffering of the dog, a huge great dame, traumatized by the inexplicable disappearance of its master and by the threat of eviction. Dogs are prohibited in her apartment building. While others worry that grief has made her a victim of magical thinking, the woman refuses to be separated from the dog, except for brief periods of time. Isolated from the rest of the world, increasingly obsessed with the dog's care, determined to read its mind and fathom its heart, she comes dangerously close to unraveling. But while troubles abound, rich and surprising rewards lie in store for both of them. That just sounds so good to me. I think it's gonna be a tough one for me, but hopefully I'll get to it in the month of April. I'm sorry if the light changes too. I'm kind 
kind of filming at a weird time, but this was the only time I had to film, so I wanted to spend some time recording. The next book that I'm hoping to read is The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy, and this is going to be a buddy read with Addie, and like I mentioned in my reading vlog, this is going to be for the 12 books recommended by 12 friends, and this was recommended to me by Kat, so I'm hoping to get to this one in April. We'll see. Like I said in my reading vlog, I am a little bit intimidated by this one. I think it's gonna be not big brainy. I think I'm really gonna have to put my thinking cap on for this one, so we will see. Let me read what it's about. So, compared favorably to the works of Faulkner and Dickens, our own Daddy Roy's debut novel is a modern classic that has been read and loved worldwide. Equal parts powerful family saga, forbidden love story, and piercing political drama. It is the story of an affluent Indian family forever changed by a single fateful day in 1969. The seven-year-old twins, Esther and Rael, see their world shaken irrevocably by the arrival of their beautiful young cousin Sophie. It is an event that will lead to an illicit liaison and tragedies accidental and intentional exposing big things that lurk unsaid in a country drifting dangerously toward unrest. Lush, lyrical, and unnerving, God of Small Things is an award-winning landmark that started for its author an esteemed career of fiction and political commentary that continues unabated. Excited to start this one potentially in April. Like I said, we'll see how many of these I actually get to. Okay, the next one on my list is Interpreter of Maladies by Jhumpa Lahiri, another one that's just been on my shelves for a very, very long time. And recently, Monica at Dog Eared Musings posted an author deep dive on Jhumpa Lahiri, and I really enjoyed that video and watching that. So that really made me want to just pick this up finally. I I think I bought this over the summer. I found it used and it's a collection of short stories and it won a Pulitzer Prize. So I'm just very excited to get to this one finally because it's been on my list for a very long time. So winner of the 2000 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction, this stunning debut collection unerringly charts the emotional journeys of characters seeking love beyond the barriers of nations and generations. A writer of uncommon sensitivity and restraint, Miss Lahiri expertly captures the out of context lives of immigrants, expatriates, and first-generation Americans. In stories that travel from India to America and back again, Lahiri speaks with universal eloquence to everyone who has ever felt like a foreigner. Honored as debut of the year, the New Yorker and winner of the Penn Hemingway Award, Interpreter of Maladies introduces a young writer of astonishing maturity and insight who breathes unpredictable life into the page. That's this one. I'm very excited to finally dive in. And the next book that I'm hoping to get to in April is going to be part of Allie's Pocket Pages book club. So it's of Women in Salt by Gabriela Garcia. This is another one that's just been on my shelves for a very long time and I haven't gotten to. I feel like it's gonna be a heavy read, but I'm excited to read it as part of Allie's book club. So for this one, in present day Miami, Jeanette is battling addiction. Daughter of Carmen, a Cuban immigrant, she is determined to learn more about her family history from her reticent mother and makes a snap decision to take in the daughter of a neighbor detained by ICE. Carmen, still wrestling with the trauma of displacement, must process her difficult relationship with her own mother while trying to raise a wayward daughter, Jeanette. Steadfast in her quest for understanding, Jeanette travels to Cuba to see her grandmother and reckon with secrets from the past destined to erupt. From 19th century cigar factories to present day detention centers, from Cuba to Mexico, A Woman in Salt is a kaleidoscopic portrait of betrayals, personal and political, self-inflicted, and those done by others that have shaped the lives of these extraordinary women. A haunting meditation on the choices of mothers, the legacy of the memories they carry, and the tenacity of women who choose to tell their stories despite those who wish to silence them. This is more than a diaspora story. It is the story of Americans' most tangled, honest human roots. So yeah, that one sounds so good. And the cover, so pretty. I really love this cover. So that's Of Women in Salt. Hopefully I'll get to it in April. The next book that I'm hoping to read in April is The Seas by Samantha Hunt. I'm hoping to do a buddy read of it with Grace. I definitely added this book to my TBR after hearing Iggy talk about it or at Literary Iggy. The way she just talked about this book, immediately I wanted to add it to my TBR. I don't have it, so I don't have the synopsis up for it. Let me look it up on Storygraph. Okay, let's see. So, moored in a coastal fishing town so far north that the highways only run south, the unnamed narrator of the seas is a misfit. She's often the subject of cruel local gossip. Her father, a sailor, walked into the ocean 11 years earlier and never returned, leaving his wife and daughter to keep a forlorn vigil. Surrounded by water and beckoned by the sea, she clings to what her father once told her, that she is a mermaid. True to myth, she finds herself in hard love with a land-bound man, an Iraq 
war veteran, 13 years her senior. The mesmerizing, fever coming of age tale that follows will land her in jail. Her other ward, oh my god, I cannot say this word. Her other worldly escape will become the stuff of legend. With the inventive brilliance and psycho psychological insight that have earned her international acclaim, Samantha Hunt pulls readers into an undertow of impossible love and intoxication, blurring the lines between reality and fairy tale hope and delusion, sanity and madness. Oh, I didn't even realize that this falls under the fantasy genre, but that makes sense. So that would be something that I'm diving into that I typically don't read. But yeah, those are the books that I'm hoping to read in the month of April. We'll see if I get to them. Oh, one other thing. I am listening to Unmasking Autism. I don't think I'll be able to finish that in March but we'll see. If I do, I'll finish it in March. If I don't, I'll just roll it over into April. I really enjoy putting together a list of possible books that I can read. Sometimes I'll get to them, sometimes I won't, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if there's any books on this list that you're also hoping to read, or if there's any books on this list that you've already read that you're like, cat, you need to read that one immediately. It's a favorite of mine. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to talk about it a bit more. Thanks for watching this video. Video. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.